are so thankful uh, that you joined with us on this evening for our Wednesday life empowerment time of uh, prayer and study in the word. And we just count it a privilege uh, that you are tuning in with us tonight, whether this is live or you're catching a replay of of this particular uh, broadcast. But we're thankful to God for another day that he's given us his mercy, his grace, and his blessings. God has really been faithful to us uh, when we think about um, everything that's going on in the world and how things could have gone in our lives. Uh, if when we really sit back and think about it, um, we can have, we do have the testimony that God has been faithful and he has taken really good care of us. Um, so let's go before the throne of grace. Dear God, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We're thankful that you uh, keep watch over us, that you provide every single thing that we need. God, we trust you in the midst of everything that we're going through. God, you have us in your hand. And because you have us in your hand, God, we know that you will provide all that we need. You are protection for us. You are a keeper. You are a sustainer. You are our way maker. So God, we bless you. God, tonight, there are those of us that have specific needs, oh God, and we pray that as we as individuals make our request known unto you, we can trust you and we won't be anxious. God, we'll be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication, we're going to make every single request known unto you. God, we're thankful that you're faithful to your word, that everything that you've promised us, everything that you've declared over our lives, it shall be. So God, we stand tonight in this moment, in this space, and we thank you for being faithful and for bringing your word to pass. God, we're thankful that you chose us out of all the people in the world for this time, for this place. Oh God, thank you for sanctify us, sanctifying us. Thank you for purifying us. Thank you for cleansing us. God, we're thankful that you picked us up out of our sin. You picked us up out of our mess. You picked us up out of our a wretched condition and you washed us up and you cleaned us up and you put us on stable ground. So God, we're thankful tonight for stable ground. God, we're thankful that we can stand on the foundation of your word. So God, in everything that we do, everything that we say, we stand on your word. All other ground is sinking sand. Everything else is going to fade away, but your word will stand forever. So we stand on your word. God bless of uh, this nation. Touch it now, God, in the name of Jesus. Every leader, every political leader, touch them now. Every spiritual leader, touch them now, God. We pray for godly wisdom and godly counsel now that we may live a peaceable life. So, God, we're thankful uh, today that you are positioning those uh, in the body of Christ to be in a position to speak truth to power, to stand uh, and declare your word, declare your will in the name of Jesus. So God, we're thankful that there is a remnant that will obey. So God, we're thankful for men and women of God all over this country, all over this world that will obey and that will speak what you declare, that won't look for popularity, won't look just for position, oh God, and, and money, God, but they'll speak the truth that you have given them to speak. So God, we're thankful that you're causing doors to be open, that you're giving us opportunity. And when we go in, we go in the name of Jesus. We go under your authority. We go under your power. You are majesty and we're subject to you. So God, we're thankful that you've chosen us to be representatives of your kingdom in the earth. So God, we're thankful that as we're on our jobs, that as we're in our neighborhood, that as we interact with our families, our friends, oh God, that we're, while we're in the marketplace, we represent you everywhere that we go. God, we're thankful for your spirit on the inside of us. God, we're thankful that you're causing us to be blessed. God, we're thankful that we have the desire and the will to live a holy and consecrated life unto you, O oh God. God, search our hearts, search our minds 
in the name of Jesus, oh God, and everything that is in us, everything that is a part of us that should not be, that prevents us from being fully committed to you, God, remove it now in the name of of Jesus. God, I pray tonight a special prayer for the brokenhearted, those that are broken in their heart, broken in their spirit, whatever the reason is, relationships, loss, grief. Uh, God, whatever caused the brokenness, God, we're praying tonight that you would be a healer. God, go there tonight. Heal, make whole, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that as you heal, there may be scars, but there won't be residue. That they'll walk away not feeling the stain of the pain. They, they'll walk away not feeling the stain of the disappointment and the letdown. But God, we pray tonight that you would give them joy, oh God, in the name of Jesus. The joy that comes from you, God. Help all of us to delight ourselves in you, oh God, and we know that you will give us the desires of our hearts. So God, tonight, give us the desire that matches your desire for our lives so that when we pray and when we ask, we ask according to your will and your desires for our lives. So God, touch us now, heal us, sanctify us again, purify us, under the blood of Jesus. We're thankful tonight for the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cover now. The blood of Jesus cover us everywhere that we go. When we're in our cars, God, we pray the blood of Jesus. God, uh, when we're uh, waiting for public transportation, we plead the blood of Jesus. If we're doing ride shares, we plead the blood of Jesus. When we're in the malls and in the grocery store, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over every uh, school in the name of Jesus, oh God. Uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over every school bus that transports our students and every teacher and every administrator, every custodian, God, in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cover now, protect uh, our schools now in the name of Jesus. Bind every plot and plan of the enemy that will try to inflict uh, violence on every uh schoolyard and every college campus now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray your peace, oh God, the peace that pass, surpasses all of our understanding. God, we pray that your peace be prevalent in the land, that even when the enemy will try to buffet us, that even when the enemy is showing out and acting crazy, God, you will give us peace and you'll cause your saints to live in peace and even prosper in the midst of it. God, we're thankful that every weapon that has been formed against us, every uh, arrow that has come up against us, it shall not work. So God, we're thankful, God, that you are our protection. You are our shield and our buckler. God, we're thankful that you are our, our battle ax in the time of battle. So God, we're thankful that you fight for us. So God, tonight, fight on our behalf. Every battle that seems uh, too big for us, every enemy that appears to be too big for us, every situation that we cannot see the way out, God, you fight for us. God, you make the way. God, we won't make our own way. We won't go lean to our own understanding, but we'll trust you with everything that we have. God, we trust you again. Oh, God, we give you another yes. God, our yes tonight makes room for us. Our yes tonight uh, elevates us. Your, our yes tonight, God, will make the way plain. So we say yes to you tonight. Wherever we are, in the midst of whatever we're dealing with, we say yes. Uh, we surrender our wills to your will. Nevertheless, not our will, but thy will be done. Oh, God, and we pray tonight that your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. God, your kingdom shall reign forever. God, you rule and reign. God, we declare that you are king of kings and you are Lord of lords. And God, your rulership has no end. So we're thankful that you are a righteous ruler, God. We're thankful that you are a just ruler 
in the name of Jesus. God, we're thankful for you. God, we're thankful that you're with us, that you never leave us nor forsake us. God, we don't know how we would have been able to make it this far had you not been with us. So we're thankful tonight and we praise you, God, just for being with us that when it got dark, we knew that you were with us. In the midst of tears, we felt you. Uh, you wiped every tear from our eye. When we were broken, you mended us back together. When we were lonely, you have been a comforter for us. God, we're thankful that you have been with us every single step of the way. And we believe and know that you'll be with us until the end, oh God. God, help us tonight to fulfill our destiny, fulfill our purpose. God, we pray that the spirit of fear be bound in the name of Jesus, oh God, and that we will walk in the confidence that we that you have placed inside of us. God, your spirit lives in us, oh God. So we're thankful that we are kingdom and will walk in our kingdom authority in the name of Jesus. God bless Be Restored Worship Center, God. God, meet every need that exists both individually and collectively. God, we're thankful that you're causing us to grow. God, we're thankful that you're causing us to prosper. God, we're thankful that you're causing us to be a light on the hill that cannot be hid. God, we're thankful that you're sending people from the north, the south, the east, and the west, the people that have a hunger and a thirst for you, God. We're thankful that you're sending intercessors and worshipers, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. You're sending administrators and ministers and prophets and prophetess to the house, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. We're thankful for the deacons in the house. We're thankful for the mothers in the house, oh God, in the name of of Jesus. God, we're thankful for every greeter and every usher that you bless Be Restored Worship Center with every singer, every musician, oh God, every parking lot attended. In the name of Jesus, God, the hospitality staff, the kitchen staff, God, we pray now in the name of Jesus that you would bless in the name of Jesus and all that we do before your glory, God, we're thankful for the media team, oh God. We're thankful for the audio visual team in the name of Jesus. Those that work social media, God, every aspect of the ministry, God, we're thankful that there are hands and there are people that have a mind to work for you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we're thankful that we all work together to ease the load, oh God, that none of us will be burnt out, that none of us will be worn out, God, but we're thankful that you are causing us to work together in the vineyard, God. We're thankful that you're sending those that will be ambassadors of your kingdom, those that have the mindset to win souls, that don't mind witnessing, going in the neighborhood, going into the city, oh God, to witness of your kingdom your goodness and your glory that you're still saving souls in the name of Jesus. You're still a soul saving God and we're thankful tonight that you're still delivering, that you're still setting free and that you're still making whole. God, we're thankful for every family, every marriage, oh God, every child in the name of Jesus that is a part of Be Restored Worship Center. We're speaking it now. Every family that's a part of Be Restored Worship Center will be whole, will be strong. God, we're thankful for strong men in the house. We're th thankful for dedicated men in the house. God, we're thankful for women in the house that will pray and that will build the house. Oh God, that will speak life to the children. God, that will speak life to the younger women in the name of Jesus. God, we are thankful for you that there are a people that are a part of this house that will thrive, that will be successful in all that we set our minds to do and put our hands to. So God, we're thankful for the entrepreneurial spirit in the house. God, we're thankful for the people uh, in this house uh, in the area of academia, oh God. We're thankful for the people in this house that have money, oh God, that will give and give as you has blessed them, oh God. That God, we're thankful that we are a giving people and will lack nothing in the house, that the house will lack nothing and our individual houses will lack nothing. God, we're thankful for mature saints, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that we won't be blown away by other doctrines and other winds, but God, we're thankful that you're causing us to be firmly planted in you, God. Touch us now. 
God, help us to not get arrogant. Help us to not get the big head. Help us to not think that we have it going on, God. But help us to be sweet in our spirit and to be humble and to trust you in the midst of everything. God, we bless you tonight. We're thankful for you tonight. God, we're thankful for a roof over our head. God, we're thankful for clothes on our back today. God, we're thankful for food to eat. We're thankful for clean water, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we don't take any of that for granted. God, we're thankful for our vehicles, our modes of transportation. God, we're thankful for jobs, oh God, uh, employment. God, even better employment. God, we are thankful tonight. In the name of Jesus, God, we're thankful that our bank accounts are blessed, our savings accounts are blessed, our investments are blessed. God, we're thankful that we have money to go to the gas station and put gas in our cars so that we can do the things that we have to do, oh God. Thankful for tonight for touching our minds and those that have, uh, have to go into their jobs to do the tasks that are set before them, that they're able to do them with excellence, God. Those that are studying, God, and doing schoolwork, God, we're thankful that you're causing them to grasp the concepts and to do it in excellence, oh God, and to get good grades, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, bless us everywhere that we are. God, you see us tonight, and you know, God, so we bless you. Oh, God, we're thankful tonight. God, I pray that you would touch those that are, that are dealing with anxiety, that are dealing with the depression, that are dealing with any type of uh, mental health issues tonight. We pray that your peace would come into their lives, oh, God, that you will speak to their mind, that you will speak to their heart, that you will speak to their situations, God in the name of Jesus, and we're thankful that you're sending people, that you're sending help in every single area. We're thankful for doctors. We're thankful uh, for counselors. We're thankful for psychologists, oh God. We're, thank you for, we're thankful for counselors, oh God. The people that you have anointed in those areas, God, we're thankful for them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that it all works together for your glory, oh God, and we're thankful for you. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. It is so. And we are so thankful for God um, on tonight. Um, we're going to go um, into the word uh, for a few moments um, to continue in uh, the vein that we've been in uh, for the last few weeks. Um, if you've missed any of the lessons, go back. Uh, they're all there on the app, or you can go to YouTube, or even Facebook, and just catch the teachings from Life Empowerment um, Wednesdays. I believe that it will bless your life. Um, so today we're going to talk about the um, Ahaz lesson, the Ahaz lesson on tonight. Um, so if you would go with me, we're going to start uh, reading uh, Second Chronicles chapter 28, and we're going to begin at verse 1 through 4, Second Chronicles 28, 1 through 4. It says, Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like, his, like David his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images for Balaam. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. And verse 4 says, he sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. It started off all bad. So if you remember, as we've been talking about the kings, you know, uh, they've had some character flaws. They've had some things about them. But if you notice that each time we started off, it said what? He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. That was the introduction. This one starts off a little different. It says that he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He didn't even try to do that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So he didn't even have the ability to go off. He started off, you know, in the wrong. 
So we see that Ahaz is 20 years old when he begins to reign. And the Bible says that he reigned for 16 years. The interesting thing about that, if we think about the other kings before him is his father. And they, they were a little bit younger. He seemed to be age-wise a little bit more mature. However, he was the one that just did not do the right thing. Um, he rules for 16 years. And you remember like last week we talked about Jotham, his father. <laughs> and Jotham what did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And based on our study last week, we saw that he was a man who listened to the prophets, who listened to the priests, who led the people, and he kept his, he kept his hand in the hand of the Lord, right? He, he was one king that stayed the course, right? So that he just died of natural causes where the other ones had some type of tragedy, right? So if when we look at this, if we think about the last few kings that we have looked at, from Amaziah, right, to Uzziah, to Jotham, one of the things that was consistent, even when the people were acting crazy, uh, they led the people well from a governmental perspective, economically, socially, they were doing well. Governmentally, they were doing well. Because if you remember, as we've talked about, they, they, they were able to go into battle and be victorious when the Lord was with them. Um, we, we saw how when Uzziah was king and even when Jotham was king, there were other nations that paid tribute to them because of their defeat of their nation. And so to make the peace, they um, gave to them a uh, great financial, they paid a tax to them. We saw where uh, they built up the city. Uh, we've seen where there have been um, technological advances during these leaderships. Uh, we see where there has been work done to the temple, right? We've been seeing this consistently happening um, with the kings before we get to this point. So when you look at Ahaz, all he had to do was come in, sit down, and don't touch nothing. Just, just don't mess up nothing. Because we already know from Uzziah, right, to his father Jotham, the government and the nation was well off. They, they were set. They, they, they had been doing well. The people were doing well. The nation was doing well. They had a strong military, right? Everything was going well as it relates to the nation. Now, the people, they, they trust and faith in God may have been a little bit shaky. But as it relates, just looking at it from a governmental standpoint and an economical and military standpoint, they were good. So Ahaz inherited a well-run government. He inherited a strong military. He inherited a nation that was strong economically. He inherited this so that when his father Jotham dies and he takes the throne, he is in a great position. How many people have we seen squander great position? That the generation before them set them up for success. The, the, in business or in, the, in, 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 in uh, real estate, had done everything that they could do to set up their children to be successful, and they squandered it. So now here we see Ahaz. For multiple generations, they have been working to set up the blessing and the nation and the rulership from one generation to the next, and now Ahaz comes in, and he said he did not even do that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He didn't even try. Second Kings uh, 16, 2 through 4 says this. He did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord, his God, as his father uh, David had done. Instead, he walked in the way of the idolatrous kings of Israel and even made his son pass through the fire as a human sacrifice 
in accordance with the repulsive and idolatrous practices of the pagan nations whom the Lord drove out before the Israelites. And verse 4 says, he, and he also sacrificed and burned incense on the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Just another account. You got to be crazy to sacrifice your own son as a human sacrifice. This is how far off Ahaz is. To sacrifice his son to a pagan god. This is where Ahaz is. Now, from all accounts, remember last week, Jotham served the Lord, right? He, he trusted the Lord. The only thing we said that he did not enter into the temple. However, he had an allegiance to the Lord his God. He listened that when instruction came, he listened. Ahaz is not even trying to listen to instruction, and he's just doing his own thing, just sacrificing, doing all kind of things, burning incense with no regard for God. And as we, we, we look at this particular uh, chapter, uh, when you get an opportunity, you can either, you know, definitely read this entire chapter or 2 Kings 16. They both give accounts of Ahaz. And one of the things that we learn um, is Ahaz went to Damascus to swear uh, homage and allegiance to Tiglath Pilezer and his gods. So there was a time, and we're getting to that, where there was, he was in battle and in war with other nations and decided, you know, I need to uh, align myself with the king of Assyria. And while he's there, he liked and took a liking to their gods. And he saw the, the jewels and, and everything that they had there to the point when once he saw uh, how they had their um their idols set up and, and their, um, their um, altars, that when he goes back, he says, look, I need y'all to replicate the altar I just saw. And the, here's the crazy thing that he does. He goes into the temple of God and takes the things of God. The Bible says that he took some of the gold and the silver and gave them to the king of Assyria. He went into the temple and just started, like, let me take this. Oh, I like to, let me take this. Then he also has, he talks to the priest and said, listen, I need this stuff repurposed. Because now I'm going to make these sacrifices and I'm going to do these things. And so he pilfered the, the temple so that he can now worship these idol gods. Ain't, ain't that crazy? So not only are you doing it, but you go into the, to the temple and say, what can I get out of here? It's some valuable stuff in here. And mind you, what has happened, the previous generations before him, we've talked about how they were building the temple. They were building the walls. And they remember, they had brought stuff so that they could rebuild uh, Solomon's temple. Now you see all the work that has been done for generations. Here comes Ahaz, and he's taking out the silver, the gold, and everything that has, in, that has been in the temple that they have been spending time and generations rebuilding. Ha has no appreciation for the temple, has no reverence for the temple. And, and let, let's, let's even go beyond that. You have no respect for the work of your father, your grandfather and your great-grandfather and the work and the time that they have committed to making sure the temple was in the right place and that so that the people could come in and worship God so that the priest and the prophets could operate out of the temple. And here comes Ahaz. It says, look, I'm, I'm going to take this stuff and then do it the way I want to do it. And so he, he likes what he sees there. And then he orders the priest to make some changes and some permanent feature changes to the temple. And then he, then the priest does, every, the Bible says that he did everything that the king ordered him to do. So there wasn't even any resistance. 
And he, he did all of this because of the king of Assyria and trying to get on his gutter. And what he saw there, Ahaz, his government is considered by the historians as having been disastrous for the religious state of the country. Now, if you remember, the people already were on shaky ground. You had some people that were serving God, that were doing the right thing. But if you remember, every time there's a leader, there are people that are still worshiping pagan gods. They're still making sacrifices. Now, mind you, they weren't doing it in the temple at this time, right? Remember, they had built other altars and stuff around the city. But now here's Ahaz desecrating the temple. And so it was disastrous for the country. And because of his leadership and the transgression of Judah, God allows them to be defeated and overtaken. See, it's one thing. So if you remember, we just talked about last week with Jotham, because of his righteousness, the people were spared because he decided to trust in God and to listen even though the people were doing things, God did not hold that against him. But now you have an unrighteous people with an unrighteous uh, leader. That's why it's so important that we have to pray for those that are in authority, those that are in leadership. This is why. Because if you get the wrong person in leadership with the wrong mindset, they will lose their mind and do whatever it is they think they can do. And so Ahaz is doing that. And so go with me, uh, 2 Chronicles 28, 5 through 8. It says, wherefore the, the Lord his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria. And they smote him and carried away a great multitude of them captives and brought them to Damascus. And he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel who smote him with a great slaughter. So they just taking hit after hit. Why? Because God was like, God's like, look, I'm not even going to protect y'all at this point. I'm going to allow these other nations to come in and just do whatever they want to y'all. Verse 6, for Pekah, the son of Remaliah, slew in Judah, listen to this, a hundred and twenty thousand in one day. It says, which were valiant men because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. Can you imagine? So we're not even, we haven't even got to children and women. It says a hundred and twenty thousand men of valor. Remember that they had built up the military. Now 120,000 are gone in one day, not over a period of time, but in one day, 120,000 men are killed. And the Bible says why? Because they have forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. It's a dangerous place to be in, to forsake God, to turn away from God. And sometimes when we become successful, or we're doing things, we forget God. We cannot forget God. No matter how prosperous we get, no matter how much money we have, no matter how much influence, no matter what leadership position we are placed in, we can never find ourselves in the place where we forsake God. So because they forsake God, forsook God, now we find them in this situation. Verse 7 says, And Zechariah, a mighty man of Ephraim, slew Messiah, the king's son, and Azrakam, the governor of the house of Elkanai, that was next to the king. So now you see, here's another, one of his sons is killed, and the governor of the house is killed, and Elkanai, who served next to him, they're all killed. And then verse 8 says, And the children of Israel carried away captain of their brethren, 200,000 women, sons and daughters, and took away also, took away, also took away much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. 
So what do we have? We had 120,000 soldiers killed. We had one of his sons killed, his governor, and one that served him killed. And now Israel has come and has taken what? 200,000 women, sons, and daughters into captivity. All because the king decided that he was not going to do that which was right in the sight of God and decided he was going to worship other gods and desecrate the temple and the people were still worshiping idol gods to the point where God said, listen, I'm going to take my hand off right now. So if you remember prior to this, there were always other nations that wanted to come up against Judah. They, they're, every time there was a war, God was with them. When God called them to go into war, they were victorious. So the only time was when Amaziah decided to take on a war that God did not call him to. If you remember that, go back and, and read about Amaziah again. That was the only time that we see a defeat because God did not call him. And God sent warning, remember, through the man of God to tell him, listen, don't go into this battle. And he did it anyway. And so now we see these other nations coming against them to the point that 120,000 soldiers are killed in one day. And now we see 200,000 women, sons, and daughters taken into captivity. But here's the thing. Isn't it amazing that even in our foolishness, God still has someone who will stand in the gap for us? That he still has grace and mercy on us, even in our foolishness. Sometimes God will allow some things to, to happen around us and he'll allow it to happen in our lives to give us a wake-up call. So there's an intervention on behalf of Judah by the prophet Odid. So 2 Chronicles 28, 9-15 says, But a, a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Odid. And he went out before the host that came to Samaria and said unto them, Behold, because the Lord God of your fathers was wrought with Judah, he had delivered them into your hand, and you have slain them in a rage that reaches up to heaven. Let me stop there. He said, listen, it's not so much that y'all are all that mighty, all that great. Understand the reason why you are victorious is because God allowed it, the same God you serve. Now, mind you, this is, this is, these are your brethren. And you got so angry and in a rage that you just start killing folks. And the prophet says that this has reached up to heaven. Y'all just went off. Y'all doing too much. So all of a sudden, look, y'all doing too much. And verse 10 says, and now you purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bondmen and bondwomen unto you, but are there not with you, even with you, sins against the Lord your God? So he said, listen, y'all got plans right now to make them slaves for you. These are your brothers. He said, but the prophet said, listen, don't y'all got y'all own sins? Don't y'all got y'all own stuff? Y'all need to tread lightly. Y'all got some stuff too. So he tells them, like, look, don't y'all have some stuff that y'all have done against the Lord? And in verse 11, he says this, Now hear me therefore, and deliver the captives again, which ye have taken captive of your brethren, for the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. He said, listen, y'all, you need to let them, them free. These are your brethren. This is Israel and Judah. He said, look, these are your brethren. Because of what you are attempting to do or about to do, you're going to have to deal with the wrath of the Lord. So then verse 12 says, And then certain of the heads of the children of Ephraim, Azariah, the son of Jonan, uh, Beth Bethorkah, 
the son of Mesopotamia, and Jezerath, and the son of Shalom, and Amasa, and the son of Hidla, stood up against them that came from the war. And he said unto them, Ye shall not bring in the captives hither, for whereas we have offended against the Lord already, ye intend to add more to our sins and to our trespass, for our trespass is great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So he said, listen, don't bring them here. It's not so much the battle, it's the fact that y'all just start killing folks in a rage. So now the wrath of God is against us. Now you're trying to take them prisoner? No, we already got enough to do. We already going to have to answer for that. Don't bring them here. We don't, we don't want, don't, don't bring that here. We don't want to deal with that either. And verse 14 says this. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the congregation. And the men which were expressed by name rose up and took the captives and with their spoiled, their spoiled clothes, all them that were naked and arrayed them and shod them and gave them to eat and drink and anointed them and carried the feeble upon the donkeys and brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees, to their brethren. Then they returned to Samaria. The same people that they had just been in a war with. Because the man of God stood up and said, listen, you've already crossed the line. Now you're about to make it worse. And then you had those that had the, the, the wherewithal to stand up and say, no, we're not doing this. And stood up. Isn't it amazing how God will cause your enemy to clothe you and to bless you? The Bible says they were naked. They took the clothes. They clothed them. They fed them. Those that had been wounded and, and, and that, that could not walk. They put them on a donkey so they can be carried. And the Bible says, and they anointed them. They put a little oil on them so they wouldn't be dusty. He'll take a situation of adversity and in the midst of it, bless you. They were blessed in the midst of all this going on. They were clothed. They were fed. They had something to drink. In the middle of chaos. That the same ones that were getting ready to take them captive now turn around and bless them and then take them back home. <laughs> so he said, God, God allowed you to win against Judah. God did it, not you. Because this was God and his judgment on them for this, for this particular act. So understand, God stayed his hand because if God had not stayed his hand, y'all might not have won this. Because you remember, Judah was bad. So he said, this is not you. It's God allowed this to happen. And if you continue planning what you are going to do, you're going to have to ask God. Have you ever found yourself in that situation? You know, already did some stuff. And the word, God, his Holy Spirit said, listen. You have already messed up. You have already crossed the line. If you continue down this path, it's going to be a whole lot more to deal with. And you have to make a decision. God, I'm, I'm sorry. Either you're going to be, God, I'm sorry, and repent and correct it, or you're going to get the, uh, a big head and be stubborn and feel like, well, I'm already on this path. I might as well continue on it. They could have easily done that. Say, well, we already got them captive. We already won. So let's just go ahead and do what we're planning to do. But they did not carry out their plan. Listen, there is an enemy that has a plan against you. It's trying to hold you captive and bind you, but because you belong to God, 
even if some things you have caused yourself, he will still show up on your behalf and what your enemy planned to do, he won't be able to do it. Why? Because God is going to show up and say, nope, you can't do that. These are still my, this is still my child. So I'm not giving you the authority to do what you want to do. There's a limit. Not stop there. Stop. I'm not allowing you to do what you planned. That, that, that right there is enough to shout on. When we think of our lives and how certain situations could have ended up, but God did not allow it to be so. What did Kirk Carr write the song? God blocked it. He didn't let it be so. It could have gone another way, but God stepped in. So, so 2 Chronicles 28, 11 says, Now hear me therefore and deliver the captives again, which ye have taken captain of your brethren, for the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. And then verse 13, he says, And said unto them, Ye shall not bring the captives hither, for whereas ye have offended Against the Lord already, ye intended to add more to our sins and to our trespass. For the, our trespass is great, and there is fifth wrath against Israel. So they say, listen, we already messed up, and we don't want to bring more on ourselves. Isn't it amazing how God turned it for them? He turned it for Judah. They were, they were able to go back to their homes. Mm -hmm. They went back to their homes anointed. They didn't just go back to their homes. They went back to their home full and anointed. They ate. They had something to drink, and they were anointed when they went back home. That, 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 Y'all catch the wisdom of that later. So 2 Chronicles 28, 16 through 27. says, and at that time did King Ahaz... Send unto the, unto the kings of Assyria to help him. So now he's like, like, I need y'all help. So this is when he's pledging his allegiance. Like, look, we, we didn't got beat up. We didn't fought. Like, I, I'm going to pledge my allegiance to y'all. says, for again, the Edomites had come and had smitten Judah and carried away captives. And the Philistines also had invaded the cities of the low country and of the south of Judah. So they're they getting it on all hands. See how things just turned from previous kings and them not being able to be defeated? Remember, they had, beat, they had already defeated the Edomites. Now here come the Edomites again. Here come the Philistines. So it says, and the Philistines also had invaded the cities of the low country and of the south of Judah and had taken Beth Shemesh and Agilon and Gedaroth and Sosho with the villages thereof and Timnah and the villages thereof Gizmo, also the villages thereof, and they dwelt there. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, the king of Israel, for he made Judah naked and transgressed sore against the Lord. So the people, that's why I say we got to pray for leadership, those that lead, or, lead us, those that are in authority, because it's what? The people were brought low because of Ahaz. They're dealing with what they're dealing with because of him where you had Jotham, that they were spared and there was grace on their life because Jotham decided to trust God. Now you have Ahaz and the people are suffering because of him. It says that then Til Tilgath, Pilsner, king of Assyria, came unto him and distressed him and strengthen them not. So you're trying to make allegiance and think they're going to help you out. They didn't even help them out. It says, for Ahaz took away a portion out of the house of the Lord 
and out of the house of the king and of the princes and gave it to the king of Assyria, but he helped them not. So you went through all of that. Judah took silver and gold out of the house of God. Judah went to the palace, took stuff out of there. Judah, Judah got everything, just tearing stuff up, gave it to them, and they still didn't help you. You, there, there are folks out here trying to pay their way, buy their way into position, buy their way into allegiance, and turning flips and doing all this stuff, and people still not helping them, still not studying them. Right. So Ahaz, they're not even studying Ahaz. Ahaz then did all of this, and you better believe they took everything that he gave them. They didn't turn it, they didn't turn it down, but they still didn't help them. <laughs> Verse 22. And in the time of his distress, he trespassed yet more against the Lord. This is that King Ahaz. So he didn't even have the common sense after everything that's going on to turn from his wicked ways, to seek the face of God. The Bible says he transgressed even the more. He ain't learned nothing yet. The, the nation is suffering. He's suffering. The people, the, the, the military didn't die. They've been held captive. They've getting, they're getting beat up on every end of Judah. And he still want to do what he want to do. And verse 23 says, For he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus, which smote him. Now, these are people that had already beat up on him. Now he's, he's going to sacrifice to their gods. And he said, listen to this, because the gods of the king of Syria helped them, therefore will I sacrifice to them that they may help me. So you, you're not going to turn to God? You, really? You're not, you're not going to turn to God of your father and your great-grandfather? But because... You done lost this little battle. You're like, well, let me go ahead and sacrifice to they guys because they winning. Man. Yeah, common sense ain't common. Says, so he sacrificed. Therefore will I sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and all Israel. So even the guys that can't even help him says they were the ruin of him and all of Israel. Verse 24. And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God and cut it in pieces, the vessels of the house of God. And listen to this. And shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. And he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. Just off. So mind you, before him, what are they doing? They're building up the temple. They're making sure the temple has everything that it needs. And here come Ahaz. Like I said, he just went through just breaking up stuff, just taking stuff. And then not only that, shuts the doors to the temple so the people can, don't even have access to the house of God. The priest, the prophet, they don't even have access to the house of God. And then he sets up his own little altars around. In a bad state, in a bad state. Verse 25. And in every several city of Judah, he made high places and burns incense unto other gods and provoked the anger of of the Lord God of his fathers. Just kept provoking God. Listen, if you don't walk away from nothing else, don't provoke God. If you don't get nothing else, listen, we have got to get to the point where we understand when we're wrong. When we made bad decisions, don't hang on that hill. Make the decision to repent to go to God and say, look, I messed up. God, I need you to put me on the right course. But Ahaz was so far gone, he just kept getting worse and worse. Kept digging a bigger hole for himself. 
So they say what? Those idols and all that he did became the ruin of himself and of Israel. Verse 26, it says, now the rest of his acts in all his ways, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Verse 27 says this, and Ahaz slept with his fathers. He died. And they buried him in the city, even in Jerusalem. But they brought him not into the sepulchres of the kings of Israel. So they did not bury him with the kings. Remember, we talked about that before. He was so off and bad. What was his legacy? That he ruined Judah. That he ruined the temple. That he caused the temple to be shut down. That they, lo- they experienced great loss. They experienced captivity. They experienced death under his rulership. To the point that when he died, he's like, nah, he can't, he can't go over here with the righteous king. He can't go over here. Man. Again, legacy. What is the legacy you're leaving behind? We asked that question a couple of weeks ago. What is the le- What will you be remembered for? What God has put into your hand, are you going to leave it better than when you got it? Is it going to be better after you're gone, or is it going to be in a worse situation and predicament than when you walked into it? And then it ends with this, and Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his stead. So now Hezekiah has to come. We'll get into Hezekiah next week. So now, those of you who know the story of Hezekiah, now you see why it was such a fight for Hezekiah. And we'll get into that next week. Because his daddy, crazy. Just, just doing all kind of stuff. Woof. We're talking about it. just every leader. They, I hope we're, we're grasping this. So Ahaz, then them ruined everything. Things were going well. Don't, don't allow things to be going well, but because of your actions and your uh, not being aligned with God, cause things to fall apart in your life. You look, God, God wants us to be successful. He wants us to thrive. He sets us up for success. And it is up to us what we do with what he's put in our hands. So here's Ahaz. Handed the kingdom. What have you been handed? What's been put in your hand? What has God given to you? And what are you going to do with it? God, we thank you tonight. We bless you tonight. God, search us. Search our heart, our mind, our intent. God, help us to not be like Ahaz. But God, it is our desire to do that which is right in your sight. Help us to not squander our resources. Help us to not lead people down a destructive path. But God, help us to trust you and to follow after you. God, help us to be at peace with our enemies. God, help us to build upon the foundation that you've given us. God, help us to always have a desire to come into your temple and worship you, the true and living God. Help us to not uh, put any other gods before you and to turn away from your righteousness and your word and go after other gods. So God, touch us. Touch us as a nation. Touch us as a kingdom. Touch us as a church at large. Forgive us for turning away from you and going after our own lust. Going after our own power. Doing that which we feel like we can do and get away with it. But God, help us to always look to you and to always build your house and not take away from it. To build your people and not destroy them. 
God, we're thankful tonight that you even have stayed the hand of the enemy that wanted to do some harmful things to us, but you were there for us and they could not do what they planned to do. So God, we thank you tonight. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Listen, God bless you. I pray that this has um, blessed you. Again, take some time this week. Uh, go back through this. Uh, like I said, if you missed anything, go back, read it, so you'll see the connection to this point. Um, but take some time this week. Um, read Second Chronicles 28. Uh, take some time uh, to read Second uh, Kings chapter 16 in your study. Um, tell, they both tell an account of Ahaz, um, and just you know, spend some time and really study and read for yourself. Um, you know, we have a few moments together here. But it, I encourage you to go for yourself and dig into this yourself. Amen. And uh, get the revelation uh, that you need to get for your life. Amen. Um, listen, I'm so, again, I'm thankful for you tonight uh, for spending uh, some time in the word with us on uh, today. Um, listen, we um, invite you to join us on Sunday at 1030 a.m. We'll be right back here. Um, both online and on our Facebook Live space. And then we'll also be here in the sanctuary. Listen, we invite you to come out and then join us in the sanctuary, 6576 Hill Street, um, Lithia Springs, Georgia. We will be here in the house on Sunday. God has been meeting us on Sunday. Amen. Powerful worship, powerful prayer, uh, the word. And I believe that um, if you come this Sunday, the Lord will meet you here. He's going to meet us here on Sunday. We're going to hear what thus said the Lord on Sunday, but we're inviting you. Bring somebody with you on Sunday. We're thankful for those that came out this past Sunday and those that invited people. Can we keep that up and just invite someone Sunday? Bring someone with you. Amen. I believe that, that God is going to fill the house. Amen. And we just have to do our part. So we're thankful uh, to God and we'll see you on Sunday. Of course, we'll be back here next Wednesday at 7.30 um, for a time of life empowerment as we continue next week. Uh, the Lord says the same. We're going to dig into Hezekiah on next week as we continue to look at the lessons that have come out of this leadership in this time with Judah. So the Lord says the same. We'll be dealing with Hezekiah on next week. And then also, uh, October, Saturday, October the 28th, we will be, 29th, we'll be having um, our women's uh, ministry service, Saturday, October 29th at 10 a.m. Uh, right here at Beer Store Worship Center, we have uh, a live option in person as well as uh, a virtual option uh, for that Sunday. If you were blessed by the first one or you missed the first one, listen, I'm encouraging you, don't miss this service. It is a powerful, I believe that we're going to have a powerful move of God as the women of God come together, women on fire for God, come together and to hear what thus said the Lord, uh, Minister Hynesha Rags will be ministering uh, to the women on that Sunday. And I'm just looking forward to what God will release in the house. I just need you to do me a favor. Um, go to our website, berestored.net, or if you have our uh, mobile app, uh, you can go to the Be Restored Worship Center mobile app and click on the flyer and go to the registration. I need everyone to register and just let us know whether you're kind of going to be in person or virtual. Let me tell you, people are registering since Sunday. We have a good number of people that have registered already. We have a limit to the number of people in the house. So don't let it be said too late. Go register tonight. As soon as you think about it, go register. Don't wait. It's like, oh, I'm going to wait till the day before. You may, we may have to. You know, you may have to just catch us online, but amen. But go and register uh, for this particular powerful service. Amen. Women on Fire for God. This Saturday, October 29th at 10 a.m. right here. Amen. Um, we're thankful uh, for each and every one of you. Um, and I pray that you have a great week. Before we leave, we just want to say uh, happy birthday to Minister LaDre Weathersby. Amen. He's back there uh, working tonight. Amen. God bless him for coming out the day after his birthday and uh, back there uh, helping us uh, to, uh, you know, bring ministry to you 
on this evening. We're praying that God bless him and continue to bless him. We're thankful uh, for his gift and the anointing on his life and for all that he contributes uh, to the ministry at large. And we're thankful. We're looking forward to what God is going to continue to do in his life. And we pray God's blessings over him. Amen. So we're so thankful for him. Listen, I love you. With the love of the Lord is my prayer that you get some sleep, you get some rest, that you be strengthened, that you experience a new revelation of who God is in your life, that every crooked place be made straight, that every need that you have in your life, that you find out for real that God is a provider, that he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. We'll see you on Sunday at 1030 a.m. God bless you. Go in peace.